Good afternoon. All very welcome to English Mass. We ask Our Lady in a special way to intercede for each one of you. I'm sure you all have needs that you brought with you here to Fatima, and we ask the Mother of God to intercede for all the needs and uh, all those that you're praying for at home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We just pause for a moment now, asking the Lord again to remove all those worries and distractions from our minds, reminding ourselves again that we're going to receive the Lord Jesus into our souls to strengthen us. There's no greater gift in any day than to receive the Lord and to attend Mass. Our Lady said to one of the visionaries in Mechagoria that if you have the opportunity of seeing me or going to Holy Mass, go to Holy Mass. Let's ask the Lord now to forgive us for the times that we have failed him. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as he hung upon the cross, choose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also. Grant, we pray, that with her loving help, your church may be more fruitful day by day, and exalting in the holiness of our children, may draw to her embrace all families of peoples. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated now for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the hatch he had made in the ark, and he sent out a raven to see if the waters had lessened on the earth. It flew back and forth until the waters dried off from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the waters had lessened on the earth, but the dove could not find a place to alight and perch, and it returned to him in the ark, for there was water all over the earth. Putting out his hand, he caught the dove and drew it back to him inside the ark. He waited seven days more and again sent the dove out from the ark. In the evening, the dove came back to him, and there in its bill was a plucked off olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had lessened on the earth. He waited still another seven days and then released the dove once more. And this time, it did not come back. In the 601st year of Noah's life, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the water began to dry up on the earth. Noah then removed the covering of the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was drying up. Noah built an altar to the Lord, and choosing from every clean animal and every clean bird, he offered burnt offerings on the altar. When the Lord smelled the sweet odor, he said to himself, never again will I doom the earth because of man, since the desires of man's heart are evil from the start. Nor will I ever again strike down all living things 
all living beings as I have done. As long as the earth lasts, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is, to you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Response, to you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Precious in the days of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. Response, to you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Response, to you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples arrived at Bethsaida, people brought to him a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village, putting spittle on his eyes. He laid his hands on the man and asked, do you see anything? Looking up, the man replied, I see people looking like trees and walking. Then he laid his hands on the man's eyes a second time and he saw clearly his sight was restored and he could see everything distinctly. Then he sent him home and said, do not even go into the village. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a moment. When we listen to that gospel from Matthew, you might think that Jesus was losing his power to heal people because we are told that he touched his ears, his eyes, and he asked him, can you see? He said, well, I can see, but people look like walking trees. So he touched him a second time, and then he could see clearly. Why would Jesus ask him first, can you see? And the man said, well, I, I can see, but not very good. Why would he have to touch him again? I mean, this is the Lord Jesus. There were times when he just did that and people were healed. In this particular case, maybe if he healed him straight away, maybe the man would have just turned away and not recognize who Jesus was. You see, taking his time to heal him, it gave the man an opportunity to know who Jesus Christ was. Do you remember the story of the 10 lepers? They all asked to be healed, and Jesus healed 10 of them. One realized he was healed and came back. And Jesus said, where are the other nine? I thought I healed 10 of you. Only one came back to thank him. Sometimes in our lives, the hardest thing to have is patience. Patience with ourselves and patience with the God who made us. We want it right now, don't we? 
You know, one time I was saying mass in a nursing home and the people obviously were elderly and I spoke about, do you want your reward in this life or will you wait until the next life? And a woman in a wheelchair put up her hand and said, Father, I want it now. And I said, well, okay, you may get it now, but you may not get it in the next life. So when mass was over, she put up her hand again and said, Father, can I change my mind? You see, any good that you and I can do, any good that you and I can do, it is only now, in this life. It's too late in the life we're going to, to say, oh my gosh, if I knew how wonderful you are, Lord, how much you love me, that sacrifice in Calvary, I would have done a lot more when I was on earth. This is the only time we're going around. Any good you can do, you can only do it now. If you think of where we are in Fatima, at one time, Our Lady put her hand down, and what we are told from the visionaries, that the earth opened up, and they saw some sort of a hell, half human, half animal, with a fire there. And she said to those young children, remember the ages seven, nine, and 10, she said, these are where people go to hell because nobody will pray for them or sacrifice for them. And then she asked after each decade of the rosary, oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have most in need of your mercy. Saint Faustina, the Polish nun who gave us the revelations of the Divine Mercy, that picture that you all know, the Divine Mercy picture. One time she had a revelation, an apparition, of, call it what you like, and in this vision she saw two roads. The first road was beautiful flowers and music and Everybody was dancing and having a great time. All were enjoying themselves as they went along the road of life. And then she said, all of a sudden, it was over. I'm assuming the end of their life. And they ended up in some kind of a hell. Then she saw another road. On this road were people who had tremendous difficulty in life. There were rocks and thorns on this road. People fell down, but they got up straight away and continued the journey. They kept going, and when they came to the end of their life, all of a sudden, they saw this magnificent place with beautiful music, beautiful flowers, all you could imagine. And she said, in an instance, they forgot all their troubles. In an instance. You see, what we're being left here with in this place is a tremendous onus on us to sacrifice. To sacrifice because another word for sacrifice is when I officiate at the weddings of young couples, I ask them, what's another word for, sar for love? And they look at me and just smile. We know what love is. And I said to them, and they don't understand it at the time, another word for love is sacrifice. Because right now, we're going to continue the Holy Mass. Before a few hours before he went to Calvary, just a few hours, he instituted the first mass. And he said to the first priests, the apostles, do it 
in remembrance of me. Remembrance of me, what he was going to do in Calvary. When our life is over and we come before the Lord, we are going to see the Lord as he is, with all his beauty. And it is only then that we will understand that sacrifice that he made for us in Calvary. At that moment, we may say, oh my gosh, if I realized how much love you had for human beings, how much love you gave in Calvary, I would never have missed the Holy Mass. As we continue the Holy Mass, as Our Lady said to the young children in Fatima, or, or rather the angel the year before, 1916, he said to them, to make a sacrifice, you can make it of everything and anything. Everything and anything. Keep that in mind today. As we continue the Mass, ask for the strength to make the sacrifices that you know are sacrifices in your life for those who do not believe in God. Amen. Let us now humbly bring our prayers before Almighty God this morning. We pray in a special way for Pope Francis and all those bishops who will be meeting in Rome over the next few days that the Holy Spirit will enlighten them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who've asked for our prayers, especially those who are sick, those who have heavy crosses, and those who are caught up in addictions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for the young, that parents and those who look after them will influence them in a positive way and bring them to church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We again pray here for the grace that we need to sacrifice more in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also remind you to pray for all those who have died and who are in need of our prayers today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We just pause now in the silence of your own hearts. Those prayers that are deep within your hearts bring before the Lord for a moment. And we ask in a special way Our Lady of Fatima to intercede for all the needs as we say the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever and ever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever and ever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our accepted by your rule, Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to proclaim your greatness with due praise. As we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary, receive your word, the Immaculate Heart. She was found worthy to conceive him in her virginal womb, and giving birth to the Creator, she nurtured the beginning of the church. Standing beside the cross, she received the testament of divine love and took to herself a sons and daughters, all those who by the death of Christ are born to heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the spirit you had promised, she joined her supplication to the prayers of the disciples and so became the pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she accompanies your pilgrim church with a mother's love and watches in kindness over the church homeward steps. United, the Lord's day shall come in glorious splendor and so with the angels and the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We now again come to the most sacred part of the Mass, the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Bishop Antonio, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of God's peace to one another.
Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is Jesus, the risen Lord, the healer. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto you, O virgins of virgins, our mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them, amen. O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time, amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Just before the final blessing, we'll make a simple consecration to ourselves, to the Mother of God, the consecration of oneself to Jesus Christ through the hands of Mary by St. Louis de Montfort. I'll say it and you can say it in your own minds slowly, this consecration to Our Lady. I, Father Edward A. Murphy, unfaithful and sinful as I am, today take your hands in mine and renew and ratify my baptismal promises renouncing forever Satan and all his seductions and all his works and making a total donation of myself to Jesus Christ, wisdom incarnate, with the intention of carrying the cross in his footsteps all the days of my life and of being more faithful to him than I have ever been until now. Today, with the whole court of heaven to witness, I choose you for my mother and queen. As your helper, I deliver up and dedicate to you my body, my soul, all my spiritual and temporal possessions, including even the rewards of any good actions of mine, past, present, or future, with the right to make use of me and what is mine, without exception, as you think best for the greater glory of God in time and eternity, amen. Let us pray. <laughs> Having received the pledge of redemption and of life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin Mother's help, your church may teach all nations by proclaiming the gospel and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thank you all for your presence. May your pilgrimage here in Fatima be one of great graces so that you can bring them home and continue your life with them. God bless you.